Service, in my opinion, is that person that is essentially either trying to make people around them have better quality of life or their communities or their country. In my case, I've found now that I wear these scars on the outside, you know, I'm just trying to make the world a better place. Where do I think my story starts? Probably when I was a young boy. I grew up in small town Texas, out around Odessa Midland, called McCamey. My father was a Vietnam veteran. My grandfather was World War II in Korea. And I just was raised with a lot of patriotism. My dad gave me so much. Some of it was a hard time, you know, in a, in a, in a way. You know, he was hard on me. I seen my dad injure himself many times. Some of it was alcohol induced. You know, there was a lot of things that my dad would say, do as I say, not as I do. He did always tell me he wanted me to be a better, better man than him. I don't know if I am. Uh, I try to make good decisions. I try to live a, a good life. So let's hear it for Staff Sergeant Shiloh Harris. I joined, I think for the right reasons. I know I did. I joined after 9-11, 2001. I felt like it was my calling and my duty to serve my nation. I wanted in a combat MOS, so I joined the United States Cavalry. On February 19, 2007, we got a call to investigate a possible IED in our area. I was the third truck in the convoy. My Humvee was hit with about 700 pounds of explosives buried in the road. It literally shredded my Humvee. That's an actual picture of my Humvee from that day. I remember kicking myself out of the Humvee, my door, the only door still standing. They said that's probably what saved my life. I get out and I'm standing there, taking in all this carnage around me, there's stuff everywhere. They uh, get me up there, lay me on the ground, start what we call combat lifesaver procedures, preparing me for medevac. My roommate, he comes over and I got a glimpse of the reflection in his glasses. My face was charred black, my nose was pretty much gone, my ears were pretty much gone, and I couldn't imagine that, that was me that I was seeing in that reflection. I started panicking, he saw that I was panicking. So he lifted up his glasses before he walked away. And I could literally see the fear in his eyes. I could see that he was looking at me going, oh my God. And I knew then that I must be pretty bad. So he walks off, they get me on the helicopter, get me into the green zone. But at that moment, I was medically induced in a coma that I spent the next 48 days in. While I was incubated in a coma, some of my dreams and it felt like an alternate reality that I was living is as close to hell as I ever want to be. It was dark, painful, scary. I felt alone, I felt helpless. It was unbelievable. And I remember when I woke up, the cognitive awareness and reality of my situation, which was another part of hell. You know, I mean, it's like, okay, Shiloh, you're messed up. You're really messed up. And I was thinking, I don't want to do this. I can't do this. And all of a sudden, they came into my room one day and they said, we want you to take 10 steps today. And I was like, 10 steps? I was like, wow. I said, I'm a combat soldier. I'm going to own this hospital, you know, all cocky about it. And uh, just getting out of bed was excruciating. I remember laying back down in that bed. I hit that bed and I was thinking, I'm not going to do it. I'm done. About three days of a pity party, my dad came in and he said, are you done, soldier? I was like, excuse me? I was like, what was that? And he said, are you done? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, are you just gonna lay there in that bed and let everybody wait on you hand and foot for the rest of your life? Or are you gonna get your ass up and do something? I was like, well, <laughs> Since you put it that way, maybe I should get up and start living my life again. 
And he said, you'll never know where you're going to be unless you get up and put one foot in front of the other and start doing it. Shiloh Harrell. Nice to meet you. I was like, you're absolutely right. And I did. And I turned those three steps into the 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and so on. And then here I am today. You know, I'm getting ready to go skydiving. We're landing with the hangers on the left. Yeah. So. My daddy was airborne, and I grew up listening to his stories of him being a paratrooper. I didn't get to do it in the military. You know, as soon as I could, I was like, hey, I want to go skydiving. I'm going to jump. I want to jump by myself today. If you would have told me that I would be where I'm at today, back in 2007, 2008, I would be like, no, you're nuts. You're absolutely nuts. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Good. You're looking beautiful, man. Thank you. Man, love, man. love you, man. Love you, man. There has been so many times through this recovery that I thought I couldn't take anymore, that I just thought I was going to break. And for some reason, I just kept digging deep, kept digging deep. You know, maybe it was my dad's words, uh, you know, are you done, soldier? Maybe those words kept ringing in my head, but I've literally been in front of the mirror with a pistol. I thought, I can't do this anymore. I can't go on any further. And I was just so unhappy. I, my physical body was just exhausted. And, and I was like, you know what, I'm done. But for some reason, I dug it deep. I just kept digging and kept digging. And I wouldn't allow myself to completely break. Oh, yeah, that's better. Better? OK. Any questions? So going through hell, obviously, uh, as it's benefits in a way, when you come out on the other side, you start thinking to yourself, I don't want to go back through that. I don't want to go there. And I guess the, that was a lesson that I wanted people to realize is that no matter what hell is going on in your life, if you can get through it and get on the other side of it, it's going to transform you into a better person in some way. Yeah, first one today. And at first it was really hard for me to see my injuries as a gift. Uh, wearing these scars on the outside is kind of a blessing in a way because people can see that I have been through hell. I went through hell to become the man I was meant to be. And I've come out on the other side, and I've still got pep in my stuff and a smile on my face. Come in. So what's the lesson here? I guess what I want to say is, if I can get through it, you can get through it. Life is worth living in so many ways. Count your blessings. I count my blessings all the time. That's one of the things that keeps me going. I love this life. God bless America. God bless us. It's a great life. Live it. You did perfect. Okay. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Walk.